Uh, welcome back to Agricultural Science class. I'm still Mr. Samuel. Now we move to a new topic. Simple farm, or rather farm machinery and implement. Farm machinery and implement. Now there are certain things you need to understand when it comes to farm machines and farm mechanization. All the things that farmers use on the farm to work are called equipment. Equipment are the materials that farmers use on the farm to accomplish their tasks. These equipment are grouped into three. We have what to call the tools. We have the implements, we have the machines. The implements and the machines put together are called machinery. Are called machinery. But before we go to the farm machinery, or the implement, it's good that we study the farm tools first. In small-scale agriculture, you know, the peasant farmers make use of simple farm tools. We call them simple because they are not complex. They are tools because they are used on the farm to do the work on the farm. Now, what are simple farm tools? Simple farm tools are light and handy equipment which are used by peasant farmers on the farm. They are very light and handy equipment used by peasant farmers on the farm. Now, any equipment that a farmer can use, either with his own one hand or both hands, without any assistance from machines or from animal or from implement, such equipment is a tool. Any equipment the farmer can use with either one hand or both hands, conveniently, without any assistance, without depending on tractor to pull it, such an equipment is a tool. Now we have examples of simple farm tools. Here on the board, I have about 34 of them. We have more. In fact, you can count up to 100 different tools that farmers use on the farm. And we have about 34 here now, which we are going to study. The first one is what we call cutlasses. Cutlasses. Cutlasses are the equipment, um, or rather, it's a farm tool, a cutlass farm tool that has a metal blade and a short wooden or plastic handle. It has a metal blade, or a metal sheet, or and a, and a, a wooden handle or plastic handle. Now, cutlasses are sharpened in one end, the other in one in, in one edge, the other edge is blunt. A cutlass may be may have a curved blade at the end, or may have a flat blunt end. Whichever way, cutlasses are used for clearing of bushes, for digging of the soil, for planting of seeds, or for harvesting, for cutting of trees. All these are work that cutlasses uh, will be used for. Now, we'll be considering the maintenance of this equipment at the end of the class. But you know, like cutlass, the maintenance should be sharpening of cutlass regularly. You don't leave it around, lying fallow on the farmland. You prevent it from um, staying long on the land to on, on the bare soil to uh, um, prevent termite attack. You prevent it from staying in rain and sunlight to prevent it from rusting. You don't allow children to play with it. You keep it in a dry and cool place. Okay, we'll look at number two, hose. Hose. Now, for number one, cutlass are equally sort of called machets. Machets. But for number two, hose. Hose are farm tools which have long wooden handle and a, a cuff blade at the end. The cuff blade is used for um, making hips, for making ridges, for hoeing or for weeding, you know, for that digging, for transplanting, for even for planting. That's what we use hoe for. But there are two types of hoes. We have to call the West African hoe and we have what we call the Indian hoe. The West African O has short handle and the, it has a small metal plate which has a prong, a sharp prong pressed into the handle. But if it is Indian O, Indian O has a long uh, woody handle, it has a curved metal blade and that blade is a wound like a loop around the handle. Meanwhile, if it is the West African O, the O, now this West African O. The West African O, 
But this is, you know, West Africa. Oh. Now this West India. Oh. West Africa. Oh. It has its handle. Ra uh, 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 the the blade round it and it has a flat end so long woody handle the the blade is wound round the handle but this has a prong this west africa west india oh. now holes are used for light the gay for hoeing or for weeding it can be used for transplanting and it can be used for planting uh, of, of uh, seedlings too. Now we have spade, spade. Then we have shovel. Spade and shovel they look alike. Both of them have long wooden handle and a metal plate in front, which is used, which long metal sheet of plate wound around the uh, broad handle. Now if it's a spade, the spade has a broad plate and with a rectangular edge, but the the shovel has a hollow blade with a round uh, edge. Now, when we talk about spade, this is a spade. This is a spade. But when we talk about, uh, um, when we talk about. When we talk about uh, shovel, it's like this. See now, this is shovel. That's a curve. That's a hollow blade and a round edge. But this has a rectangular edge. This is spade and this is shovel. Now, both of them are used for leveling of soil surfaces. We use them to level the soil surfaces. Then we can use them to excavate soil, to dig, for light digging, to carry soil from one place to another. We want to load a truck with sand. It is a spade you use, or the shovel. We, we can also use them for light clearing of bush on the farm. When you have uh, some boots of which growing and they are not so tall, you can use shovel or, uh, or spade uh, to overcome them. We can also use them to mix cement with sand when preparing concrete for a livestock house. Now, we the maintenance almost the same. They should not be allowed to be light fallow on the farm to prevent them from rusting and to prevent termite attack. They should be cleaned after use and stored in dry um, place, and um, the they should be used for the purpose uh, meant for. Now we have garden fork, we have ant fork, we have ant uh, tool. Now let's look at garden fork and ant fork. For garden fork. Garden fork has a long woody handle. Garden fork has a long woody handle and four prongs. A long woody handle. And uh, prongs. One, two. Three, four. This is a garden fork. Garden fork is used for a uh, clearing of bush. After you have used hoe or shovel to, to, to remove the weeds or bush, garden fork will be used to gather the trash together, maybe for burning or for remover. Then garden fork can also be used for leveling of the soil. It can be used to spread manure on the farmland. Now, from there you can move to hand fork. Hand fork has a short woody handle that is not as long as this and it has short prongs or tines. These are called prongs or you call it tine. So this is a hand fork. Hand fork is used for lesser jobs. It can be used to gather um, cut bushes or woods also. It can be used to spread manure. It can be used for leveling of the soil. This hand fork, while this is a um, uh, garden fork. Garden fork can also be used to pack hay or to pack uh, uh, grasses that are caught on the farmland. Now we move to the the maintenance are the same, just like that of the spade and the shovel. We now move to rake. 
rake uh, okay hand thrower first hand thrower has a very small handle and a small curved blade a very small handle a very small handle and a curved blade like like spoon that's a very small handle and a curved blade like spoon the blade is curved the blade is curved in such a way that it is very easy when you want to use it for transplanting it's used for transplanting now why was the uh it has, this is wooden and this is steel and it's curved it is used for light digging of the soil when you are digging for transplanting from the nursery to the field you can use the wooden handle and you can use the um, um, hand thrower to dig for light digging, also for transplanting. It is, can be used to remove bulb of eggs with the seedling for transplanting. The, you also have axe. The maintenance of this is small. You do not allow it to lie fallow on the farm to prevent from rusting. You also prevent the wood handle to be, from being attacked by the termites. Now, hacks and picks axe or digger. An axe is a result of two that has a long woody handle, a long woody handle, and it has a cutting edge that is uh, attached to it. A long woody handle and a cutting edge that is attached to it for slicing wood. It could be either round about it or it could be with a prong on it. Now, hacks has a long woody handle, woody, and a flat uh, metal blade. This is a metal blade. It is majorly used for slicing of wood. It can also be used for felling of trees. It's used for felling of trees. It's used for slicing of wood. It's used for cutting of logs. These are uh, um, um, pick um, axe. Then we have the pick axe. Pick axe is also called digger. The difference between axe and pick axe Although the pick has has a long wooden handle, but the but the pick has has two metal prongs to work with, which are curved backward. Which are curved backward. Now this is a a, a, a digger. One of the end is longer, the other is short. It is used for digging. This end could be used for digging, while the other end could be used for removal of stumps. So a digger or pickaxe is used for digging or for the, for the digging of the soil or for removal of stumps or add roots in the soil. Then we have the head pan. Head pan is more or less like a bucket. It has a, a bucket that has small circumference at the bottom and large circumference at the edge. Then it has handle two handles that are opposite uh, each other. Now, an head pan is used to convey or transport sand or seals or harvested produce from one, farm, from one pound of farm to another. It can also be used to convey materials like fertilizer or chemical or uh, uh, herbicide or whichever or seedlings from one part of the farm to another. It is, can be used by one man by carrying on the head or by two people by each one holding uh, each part of the handle. Then you have the watery can. The watery can is like a bucket with, which is sealed on top. Then it has two handles. Handle here and under handle here. Then it has a long sprout of neck ended with a rose. A, the rose is an expanded end of the neck which has perforations. Now, the body of the water can is called tank. That's where we pour the chemical or the water that we want to use it to use. Then the rose is, can be removed or it can be fixed back and it has perforations. This is the rose through which the content of the, of the tank can be released. What you can like name implies uh, 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 is a can. You know, it's a container that we put water in. It is used for light irrigation, you know, for watering 
of seedlings for watering of flowers. It can also be used to, for, to apply soluble fertilizer to the farm. You mix the fertilizer with the water, you put a watering can and you apply it on the farm. It can also be used to spray pesticide and insecticide. You know, you mix the chemical with water, you put inside the watering can and you spray it on the cross and the chemical will kill insect pests. That's what we can for you. Then we go to another one called Matok. Matok is on books. You see as you see it as digging Matok. Matok is more or less like a digger, but it has two prongs that are small. The prongs are very small. Now it's like this. A long handle. Then has two prongs that are small. One of the prongs look like O. The other prong look like a digger. So, it is majorly used for the removal of stubborn stumps on the farm. For the removal of stubborn stumps, it can also be used for light weeding. It can be used for digging also of the soil. It has weeding handle and two light uh, and two small prongs. Then you have what you call pruning saw. Saw, any you call saw, has sharp tooth or sharp teeth for cutting. And it's pruning. Pruning means remover. So, uh, pruning saw is a type of saw which is used to um, reduce the branches, to cut off excessive branches of the trees. It can also be used for cutting of edges of flowers, for trim of edges. Uh, so it can be used for cutting of bud wood when you want to do um, budding, innovative propagation. So we can use pruning saw to cut it. The pruning saw has a small wooden handle, then it has a long blade which is serrated or tooth on both sides. Both are as teeth, you know, and handle. This is the handle, these are the teeth of both ends. This is a pruning saw, you know. Now you have number 15, you have sickle. Sickle is as a very short handle with a curved blade. Sickle has a very short handle, handle and with a a cup blade. The blade is sharpened inside. This side is sharpened, but the other end is blunt. Sickle can be used to harvest grasses, to clear or cut grasses. It can also be used to harvest tree crops or fruit crops, like uh, cocoa or like a uh, mango. Then it can also be used to harvest cereal, like rice. So sickle is used for harvesting of uh, rice. Then from there, we move to harvesting knife. Harvesting knife is also called go to hell. Harvesting knife is very close to sickle. The difference is that harvesting knife, knife has a long handle. It has long handle. Then it has a blade that is curved at both sides. So that's a blade attached to it, which is curved like this. Then it's also curved the other side. So it has both curved. This one is sharpened at this place. It sharpened here, it sharpened here. It can be used, it can be used to um, harvest tree crops like cocoa, like mango. It can also be used to do um, light weeding on the farm. Long handle and a curved blade attached to it. Now you have the root loading fork. Root, root. You have the root loading fork. A root loading fork has a long handle. And then it has prongs, like three, attached to it. These prongs are long and they are bent forward. So it can be used to remove the roots and also to carry it from the ground into uh, a waiting van or lorry or a wheelbarrow. So we used to remove roots of plants. It can also be used to uh, carry hay or, see, or, or, or grasses in, from the ground into the van or into the wheelbarrow. Then you have a fork. A fork is very close to the root loading. Root loading has about three or four prongs, but a fork has just two two prongs or sometimes three at most three so hay fork is used to carry a, what is a hay are dry grasses which are preserved 
for video of animals doing dressing. So when you want to pack it and when you want to drag it, you use a fork. A fork can also be used to spread manure on the farm and to spread to spread manure on the farm and to spread fertilizer on the farm. That's the work of a, a fork. Then you have a manual drag. Manual drag is very close to the root loading fork. Manual drag is close to root loading fork. It has a wooden handle, then it has prongs that are bent at in front. This, this is it. It could be three, it could be four. Now, bent in the front. The whole function of manure drag is to drag manure to spread properly on the farmland. When you want to apply manure on the farmland, either compost manure or fine animal manure or green manure, that has to be spreaded. So when you put it down in form of heap, you use manure drag to drag it and spread it. This manure drag can also be used to replace a vesting knife, I mean to replace a fork in the carrying of a from the ground to the um, loading vehicle. Then we have, next one is wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow is like a cart, like a wooden box that has one wheel in front and then that has two stands at the back. It stays on the stand and the wheel. But when you want to move it, you lift the stands, the two stand up and you push it forward or backward. It rests on the wheel and it moves either forward or backward in the wheel. Now, the the load, the material to convey or to transport is put in the carriage, in the wooden carriage. Then the user will hold the handle of the wheelbarrow and pull it or push it in the direction that it desires to move the, 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 the tool. Wheelbarrow is used for transportation of um, farm produce from the farm to the market or transportation of input materials like fertilizer, like seeds, one part of the farm to another. It can also be used to transport sand or transport cement during uh, the construction of farm building. Now we move to crowbar. Crowbar. It's like a crowbar is a bar, it's an iron bar. It's an iron bar that is bent in the front. In the front. Iron bar that is about 90, 90 uh, centimeters to 1 centimeter long. And then it is bent to the front such a way that when you want to move an item from one place to another, it's really heavy items. The crowbar is pushed into it and then it's, it's a drawn back at an angle. The crowbar will shift the load to the front. You do that repeatedly and the load is moved from one point to another. Now that's the crowbar. Then you have broad door. A broad door is uh, a tool that is used for drilling, for perforating, like you can use to drill hole into a wood. It has a wooden handle. It has a short wooden handle. Then it has a long metal pointed metal that's attached to the wooden handle. And the long metal is pointed at one end with which it can be hammered. It can be hammered into the wood and it drills hole into the wood. That is a brother. Then you have to call body knife. A body knife is a knife that has a small handle and a small cup blade. It's a body knife. It has a wooden handle and a small blade, which is sharp at one end and a blunt at the other end. Now, a, a body knife is used for cutting the stem stalk of a plant during body activities. Body is a is a is an artificial vegetative propagation method by which the plant, you know, you, you, you transport a board, you know, from, in, from a plant into the stalk of another plant. That stalk, we use the body knife to cut a T-shape, cut a T-shape on the, on, the, on the stalk, and you lift the cambium up, you know, you expose it, you lift it up and put the um, the the um, board that you have cut into it, and then you tie it together. So that's body. Body knife is used to for cutting of a stem of of a, um, the stem or the stalk plant during body process. It can also be used for other activities on the farm for cutting. 
The number 24 is emasculator. Emasculator is also called police supplier. Emas word emasculator, it means to, to render a male animal sexually impotent. Emasculator has a pair of pincers. It's like a plier. That's a pair of pincers, you know, by which that's a pair of pincers and a handle. Now, the handles are held with both hands and the pincers are put across the scrotum of the animal. At the upper poles of the animal, the pincers is pressed, the handle is pressed and the pincers will crush the somatic cord of the testes. The thoracic cord is the cord that brings blood and food to the testes so that the testes will be alive, so that the testes will be able to produce sperm cells and hormone uh, testosterone. But to render a male animal um, sexually impotent, to emasculate the animal, you need to cut off the somatic cord so that blood cannot get to the testes and then this will be dead. And the animal will be able to produce homo testosterone, which is more of sex drive. And the animal will be sexually impotent. And then the animal will not be able to produce sperm cells too. So the animal will be sexually impotent. To do that, you need a body supplier, which is also called a masculator, to crush or to cut the somatic cord. That's the function of a masculator. Then you have the shears. Now, shears is a, low, is, is a big scissor, giant scissors. It has um, a pair of, um, we call it a pair of shears. It has a pair of uh, curved metal blades, which are joined at the center. The other side will be the handle, and the frontal part will be the cutting edges. The, the shears is used for trimming of flowers, cutting of extra branches off for uh, uh, for designing of uh, flowers and uh, for light pruning purposes. That is shears. Then you have secateo. A secateo looks exactly like the it looks exactly like the uh, scissors. Where that it has a very small cutting edge and it has a spring in between the handle. The spring helps each time you press the handle, the spring returns it back to its own position. A secateur is very strong in cutting extra branches in doing pruning work. When you want to trim the edge of flowers, you can use secateur. When you want to cut boardwood, you use secateur. Secateur is strong and in, in cutting. It's, it's like a plier and it cuts the, uh, 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 the, the wood or the extra branches sharply at, at a time. Then you have hammer. Hammer is a tool with a long wooden handle. Now, in this one days, we have hammers that have iron handle or plastic handle. Then, at the end of the hammer, you have a metallic edge. Metallic edge. Sometimes the metallic edge will be at one side, the other side will form a form of pincers which can be used to remove nail. This is hammer. It has a short woody handle and then it has a ball of iron, which is the hammer head. The hammer head could be at the other time, at the other seconds at the other extreme with a pincer for remove of nail. Why the head of the hammer is used to driving is used to, for driving of nail into the wood. It's used for breaking of materials or for smoothing of things. When a uh, plate uh, of metal is curved, hammer can be used to smoothen and straighten it. Now, you have mallet. Mallet is just like a hammer. It has a wooden handle. But the difference is that it has also a woody edge. You know, hammer has a woody handle and iron edge. But a, 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 a mallet has a woody handle and the woody head. Most often, mallets are used to drive uh, to on, 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 on materials that will be spoiled by a hammer. The hammer has an iron uh, metallic end uh, or, or head. So instead of using it to spoil things, you use mallet. For example, when you want to arrange ties, it is mallet that is used. When you want to do work that you don't want to damage the surface, you use mallet. Mallet has a short handle and a wooden handle and the wooden edge. Then you have pliers. Pliers, you know, a pair of pliers, they are high on, you know, that has been bent and curved in a way that it can grip things. It has a fulcrum at the center. And then it can be used, the handle can be used and pressed together and the pliers can be used to grip materials. It can be used uh, for tightening of nuts and bolts, 
for you have a screwdriver a screwdriver is um, is a tool that has a short handle which could be made of a, a plastic or sometimes wood then it has uh, a long uh, narrow iron um, sharpened iron teeth with which you can use to loosen equipment or screws or to tighten it sometimes the screwdrivers can also be shaped into a form that is called tester to test if there is electric current in the circuit then you have nuts and bolts nuts and bolts they work together a, a, a bolt has is a long iron rod that has a big end and then the other circuit at one a huge end at one the other end is grooved so that it can be able to enter the knot the knot has a space and a groove inside through which the boat can enter the knot will be used to screw up the boat not that boats are used to hold materials in position they could use on iron sheets they could use on wooden sheets to tighten two iron or two wooden materials together or a wooden material to an iron material then you have shizu a shizu is a shizu is, is a strong um, metal steel that has a woody handle and it has a flat sharpened edge which is used for cutting off bits of wood we call it shizu to shizu to shapen the, 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 the particular wooden structure to the type that is wanted so you need to chop up part of the uh, wood and this is done with the use of a, a shizu now let's look at the general maintenance of all these tools all these simple farm tools have ways by which they could be maintained. number one the tools should be cleaned or washed after use especially those ones that are used on the farmland where you have moths and sands they should be cleansed if you don't clean them the metal part may go rusty and then they may become blunt and they may become dirty and then not good for use the next time you want to use it so you have to clean it and then wash it properly after use then the joints should be oiled when you have some when you have uh, tools that has joints like uh, uh, pliers like secateur like shears like emasculators all these ones they have joints and uh, they've got the joint must be oiled or greased to reduce friction you do that at interval of time the blades or edges should be sharpened when necessary example you have the cutlass you have the shovel you have the hole all these are blades the blades will be sharpened so that they don't go blunt completely then the metal part should be painted oil or grease where to be stored for a long time when you are not using the equipment and you are keeping it for a long time you got to paint the metal part or oil it or uh, grease it so the next time you are going to pick it it will do not have frosted then the tools should be kept away from children some of the tools are harmful they have cutting edge that can um, uh, cut the children when they play with it so they must be kept away from children then they should be stored in a cool and dry place where they will not rust next any one out part of it should be replaced as early as possible the one out part of the tools should be replaced any damage tool should be repaired as early as uh, possible the knot and bolt should be checked regularly and retarding when loose there are some tools that have knots and bolts they should be cleansed they should be um i mean they should be checked regularly and retarded when loose then the manufacturer instruction should be followed every tool has manufacturer specifications and instructions this should be followed at uh, uh, strictly so as not to misuse the uh, in tool and then to not to make it unfit for use again then number 10 the tools should be handled with care and used for the intended purpose if you handle the tools with care you shouldn't drop the tools anyhow so as not to break any part of it you should use it uh, with care and uh, use for the purpose meant for the tools should be kept away from sun rain and uh, termite the sun and rain will make the tools to rust while the termite will eat the, the wooden part tools should be kept away from uh, um, sun, from rain, and uh, 
Now I want to go to farm machinery. Actually, farm machinery includes the machines and the implements that are used on the farm. So the one farm machinery comprises of the machines that are used on the farm as well as the implements. So we are going to consider the machines for the level with data we complete because consider the implement. Machines. Machines are the equipment that are self-operational. They have engines with which they operate. What the um, operator, the pet man who handles it needs to do is to set it in action and to control it works. It continues to work. Meanwhile, implements, they are like advanced tools. They cannot work except they are attached to a tractor or animal that will pull it. Meanwhile, the operator will stand to operate the implement, but the tractor will be pulling it. So let's start with the machines. <clears throat> there are two types of machines. We have what to call the mobile machines and stationary machines. The mobile machines are commonly called uh, they, are, they call it called field machines. Why the stationary machines are called bar machine. Now, the mobile machines, they are two or three. You ought to call the tractors, you ought to call the bulldozers, you ought to call the three fellas. These are the machines that are used on the farmland, on the field. Now, a farmland has to, when you look at a big farm, a very big farm, a big farm can be divided to two. You have a section called the field. This is where crops are planted. Then you have the place which you call the shed, or you call it the barn, or it could be called the um, um, okay, can you call it barn or shed. That's the place where you have the buildings, the farm buildings where you can use as our house, where you can use as office, where you can use for storage. Now, the machines that are used here, they are called feed machines. They are mobile. They can move from one place to another. But the machines that are used here, they are stationary. They are used, they are called processing machines. Stationary or processing machines. So, they are used for processing. And they are kept in the farm state, okay? Can you see farm, barn, shed or state that used kept in the farm state a farm state is a building of the farm which is used for production processing or official purposes so the machine used there are feed machines and these are tractors bruisers and tree fellers but the machine used here are, are processing machines and these machines include machines like dryers machines like Shellers, like grinders, like incubators or mixers, like incubators, like milking machine, etc. Now, these are the feed machines. They are mobile. They have tires. They can move from one place to another. But these are stationary machines. They cannot move. They stay in a place. Another example is refrigerator. They are used for processing, for post harvest handling or farm tools. Now, we have implements. Implements are the equipment which can only be used when they are attached to tractor. That can move them from one place to another. Examples of implements include plows. Harrows, ridges, sprayers, or planters, sprayers, and harvesters. 
All these things put together are called farm machinery. So we are going to study them one after the other, starting from the tractor. So uh, let's write this one up here so we can have space to do our work. So we said we have uh, implement like plows, like harrows, like ridges, planters, sprayers, harvesters. So we want to start with the tractor now. Tractor. What is a tractor? A tractor is a machine that is very strong and versatile that is used for pulling or farm implements on the farm. Actually, the word tractor was derived from English word traction. The word traction in your dictionary means the force of pulling, to pull something, that's traction. The machine designed for pulling of implements is called tractor. Now, how do you know a tractor when you see it? I'm sure many of you must have seen, you in particular, must have seen a tractor before. But you perhaps you never knew it was a tractor you saw. These are things that enable you to distinguish tractor from other automobile. Number one, a tractor has two pairs of tires. The front pair are smaller than the rear pairs. In other words, in a tractor, the front tires are very small, while the back tires are very huge and big. Number two, a tractor has only one seat that is meant for the operator. You do not have any other seat there. You just one seat which the operator must sit upon. A tractor may have no roof or may have roof. In the past, tractors don't have roof, don't have cover for the operator. But today, we have some modern tractors that have a small cubicle that with a covering where the operator can sit. Another thing you factor with the tractor is that a tractor has its exhaust pipe, which you call silencer, in position in front of the operator and raised to the air. When you look at a tractor, the silencer is raised vertically to the air. Normally, in automobile, the tractor, the silencer or the exhaust pipe will, will be shooting out from the rear or at the side of the automobile. But for tractor, it is in the front of the operator and raised to the air. A tractor has what we call hydraulic system for lifting and lowering of implement. Hydraulic system, hydraulic in phases, and hydraulic, hydraulic is just two concentric metal tubes, one inside the other. And the one inside is operated by hydraulic fluid, which is connected to the levers. When the levers are pressed, the fluid rushes to the tube inside and is pushed it out of the one outside. That's hydraulic system. A tractor has hydraulic system, which is used for lifting and lowering of the implement attached to it. A tractor has something we call power takeoff shaft, PTO, power takeoff, PTO. This PTO is rotating shaft at back of the tractor, which were connected to a stationary machine like grinder or shaler. The tractor can power it. It's a rotating machine, it's a rotating uh, shaft. It can rotate grinder, shellers, or mixers. That's a tractor. Let's go over it again. How do you distinguish, distinguish a tractor? A tractor has two pairs of rubber tires. The front ones are smaller, the rear ones are bigger. Number two, a tractor has only one seat that is meant for the operator. Number three, a tractor has a source pipe positioned in front of the operator and vertically raised to the air. Then number four or five, a tractor has what you call a hydraulic system, which is used for lifting and lowering of implements. Then a tractor has what you call PTO, power takeoff shaft, which is used to supply power to stationary uh, machine. Now, what is the use of tractor? What do we use? Or before that, what are the types of tractor we have? We have different types of makers of tractor. We have what you call the Vibran. It's the maker of tractor. The Vibran. Or DB, simply put DB. We have Massifaguzin. Massifaguzin. Massifaguzin is another brand of tractor. It's a, one of the oldest tractors. We have MF. We have what we call a Fiat. It's a type of tractor. We have Ford. It's a tra type of tractor. We have Caterpillar. Caterpillar. Or simply put, CAT. It's a type of tractor. These are types or makers of uh, 
tractors. Okay. Now, what is the, what do we use tractor for? Tractor for tractor serve many purposes on the farm. The first one is that tractors are used for pulling implements. Implements like plow, arrow sprayers, ladder sprayers, harvesters can be connected to the tractor. Tractor will pull them, and the operator will operate the implement as tractor pulls it. Then, tractor can also be used for lifting and lowering of implements via its hydraulic really system. The other system it has can enable you to lift or enable the tractor to lift or lower implement. Then the tractor can also be used to power stationary machine through its PTO, through its power takeoff shaft. It can be used to power stationary machine in order to rotate the machines. Then uh, tractor also have internal combustion engine. That internal combustion engine that uh, uses either diesel or petrol. There are some tractors that use petrol or diesel for combustion uh, to move them about. Now, another use of tractor is that tractor can be used when connected to a trailer. It can be used to convey uh, input materials like fertilizer and seeds from the market to the farm. It can be used to transport farm workers from part of the farm to another. It also can be used to transport harvested produce from the farm to the market. Now, what do we call trailer? Trailer is not the truck that we're talking about. A trailer is a carriage. A carriage like look like a cart, like a cart, like a wheelbarrow, a carriage that's attached to the tractor at the back. So when the tractor is going, it pulls the carriage. This carriage can contain different things that will uh, that the tractor will pull and convey uh, to the farm. Now, how do you maintain your tractor? You can maintain your tractor just like you maintain your car. You inspect the tire pressure regularly so as to make mobility easy. You check the radiator. If the water is low, so the tractor will not overheat, you top up the water. You check the battery, the electrolyte of the, electrolyte of the battery. The local portion of the battery is called electrolyte. This is what keeps the battery charged and working perfectly. If the, the electrolyte is the liquid portion of the battery is down, you fill it with distilled water so it can work very well. You uh, check the, the boats and nuts on the tractor regularly to make sure the nuts and bolts are not loose. When losing, you retighten them. Then when the tractor is operating, you clean the uh, you you clean every clog of soil and mud that attaches to the tractor, you know, after operation every time. The implement should be used by a qualified uh, operator. Then you must address it to manufacturer instruction. You must not overload the tractor. A tractor has its though it's a strong uh, machine, but it has its power limit. You do not use your tractor like a towing van to tow a truck. It can break down the tractor, it can knock the engine. So you make sure you do not overload the tractor and the tractor should be used strictly for the purpose that is meant for by the uh, designer. Now, that's our trans tractor for you. We want to go to bulldozer. Bulldozer. What are bulldozers? Bulldozers are very strong, heavy, complex, and sophisticated machines. Now, see on bulldozers, we said that bulldozers are very useful um, in clearing of a virgin forest, in the pulling down of a virgin forest, construction of roots, leveling of the soil, pulling down of a abandoned or dilapidated building. These are the functions of bulldozers. Bulldozers are very strong and efficient. Now, we have three fellas. Three fellas are designed just like a tractor or like a bulldozer. It's more or less like a bulldozer. But it has a very long handle with a grip with which it can be, it can be used to grip a tree and pull it out of the earth. Instead of wasting time in cutting trees, cutting trees, tree fellers are very strong and efficient in pulling out a tree and put it on the ground for lumbering. That's the work of three fellas. Uh, we can move down to the other machines, which we call the stationary or processing machines. Now, the first one there are the dryers. You know, a dryer is a machine designed for reduction of moisture content of seeds before storage. Dryers can be used to dry seeds, like uh, beans, that's cowpea, granite, cocoa beans, it can be used to dry meat. Calculate be used 
to dry fish. Sometimes can be used to dry tubers, you know. So that's dryers. Dryers of different sizes and capacities. But many of them use electricity, which blow hot air through the product that is kept is that are kept inside of them. This hot air will help in drying the produce. It reduces the water content to about 10 to 15 percent, so that it can be the content of this or, um, material materials can be stored for a long time. Then we have the shellers. The word shell means to remove the, the sheller. The, wash, the shellers are machine designed to remove the shell of grains, to, to remove grains from the covering. That's shelling. Or if this means to remove the maize grains from the crops. Now, we have different types of shellers designed for different types of crops, but they work on the same principle, either manually or electrically or mechanically. Shellers help to remove the tester, the circle, the shells of uh, or green crops and can be used to remove the maize grains from the crops. They are powered majorly electrically or could be operated uh, mechanically. That's shellers. We have grinders. Grinders are the machines that are designed to reduce uh, farm produce into powdery forms. They can be used to grind uh, grains or cereals or can be used to grind tubers uh, like cassava. Or, or can be used to grind any uh, flour, uh, meals, poultry meals, or animal feeds. Now, there are different types of sh uh, grinders designed for different types of uh, produce, but they work on the same principle. A grinder could be operated electrically or could be operated mechanically uh, with fuel. They always have the end, which is the grinding end, and the end, which is the motor. The motor will operate the grinding end with a belt. That couple the two together. Then you have the mixers. The mixers are the machines designed for mixing of different materials together uniformly into one. We have the mixers that are used for mixing animal feeds. When you want to prepare animal feeds, you have different things together, like grounded, like a, 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 um, the maize grains that have been grounded, like the uh, oyster shells, like the uh, blood meal, salt, you know, uh, granola cake, all these things will be differently grounded and then they mix together. The mixer will help in total mixing of them so that a good um, feed could be formed. Then we have the incubators. Incubators are machines designed for development and hatching of fertilized eggs of poultry animals. I think again, incubators are machines designed for development and hatching of fertilized eggs or poultry animals. You see, an incubator helps to hatch more eggs than a, a mother hen would have done. Now, an incubator generally has two apartments. Incubators has two apartments. The first one is called the setter, and the other one is called the archer. Incubator is like a refrigerator. You know, a refrigerator has two components. You have the freezer and you have the fridge. So the freezer is more, is stronger. It, it freezes things, unlike the fridge that makes things cool. The same thing goes to incubator. The incubator has two apartments, the setter and the archer. The setter is the place where the eggs will be kept the first time it is brought in. And it will, the eggs will be kept there for the eggs to develop the empire to develop into full chick inside the egg. Then later it's taken to the archer, where the egg will hatch and the chicks will come out. Um, normally, uh, the a domestic fowl, the egg of a domestic fowl, will be incubated for 21 days. The first 18 days will be spent inside the setter, and the last three days will be spent inside the archer. The setter can take the eggs with the potted plate going up. Now, we have different types of incubators. We have small incubators, which we call portfolio incubators. Portfolio. Portfolio incubator, or we call it tabletop incubator. Then we have another one we call cabinet incubator. Cabinet incubator is very big. Meanwhile, portfolio incubator is small. It's like a portfolio. Portfolio incubator can only handle eggs in terms of tens or dozens. Meanwhile, the cabinet can handle eggs 
uh, in form of hundreds and thousands, depending on the size of it. Now, whichever the equator you talk about, either portfolio or cabinet, an equator must have a turning device by which when you put the X inside it, if it's automatic, if it is artificial turning device, the X must be turned with hand at it. But if it is auto, if it is a cabinet, there's automatic turning device that rotate the X at it. The X will be rotated for even or equal development of the embryo. Okay. Now, when the X are in the incubator, the temperature of the incubator must be operated at between 37 degrees C to 39 degrees C. And then it was operated at an optimum or rather relative humidity of between 60 or between 50 to 70 percent. But the optimum, the best, R is relative humidity is 60 percent. So the incubator was operated at a temperature of 79 degrees C and at relative humidity of between 50 percent to 70 percent. But the optimum relative humidity is 60 percent. Now, the eggs will stay 18 days in the center, the main three days in the archer. At the end of the day, the eggs will hatch in the archer. That's for the incubator. Now, we move to the milking machines. Milking machines, they are machines designed for extraction of milk from the uda or mammary gland of uh, dairy animals. Dairy animals or dairy animals are the animals that are reared for milk production. Examples include some breeds of cattle and some breeds of goats. It should be noted that the best milk from all mammals, from all animals put together, the best milk can be gotten from goat. Goat milk is the best milk. But for production and for commercial purposes, cattle milk are used because the cow milk, the mammary gland of cow, are bigger than that of the uh, goats. And so we can get uh, enough milk from cow. But the best milk is from a uh, goat. Okay, now the milking machine. The milking machine uh, has a lot of components put together. The first part of it is called the vacuum pump. What do I call it? Yes, vacuum pump. The vacuum pump is operated by a motor. The motor will rotate and the rotate the vacuum pump. The vacuum pump will suck. As it's sucking, it goes through a um, gauge and tap. The gauge is used to know the suction force of the pressure. Maybe it is the suck is too strong or it's too weak. It can be adjusted. And then the tap is closed or open. When opened, the vacuum pump will pray through and go straight to the milk tank. Then the milk tank, we, on top of the milk tank, you have the pipes going to what we call the, uh, the teeth cups. The teeth cups. The teeth cups are four. They are fastened on the teeth. What is a teeth? A teeth is the pointed part of the mammary gland. In man, we call it nipple. But in animal, we call it teeth. In man, we call it breast. But in animal, we call it uda. So the portal part of the uda, like this, this is the uda, and this is the teeth. Now, the teeth, you fasten the teeth cup on the teeth, the teeth cup will roll to the milk tank. So when the, when the, incubate, the milk machine is now operated, the vacuum pump will suck through the milk tank to the um, teeth cups. As the milk flow from teeth cups, it gets it's stored into the milk tank. But alongside, after the teeth cups, or before you get to the teeth cups, between the, the focal pump and the teeth cups, you have something called the trap pail. The trap pail is there for any contaminant to stay. If one of the four teeth cups should drop to the ground, it sucks pressures, it sucks air and paper. It's not the air and paper to contaminate the milk, it goes to the trap pail straight. Then we have the refrigerator. Refrigerator is a machine designed for storage of agricultural produce under cold condition. I think it again. Refrigerator is a machine designed for storage of agricultural produce under cold conditions. Can be used to store uh, um, vegetables, can be used to store fish, meat, 
another materials. Now, the refrigerator has two apartments. You have the apartment called the fridge. You have the apartment called the uh, freezer. The freeze, the fridge. When, when materials are put in the fridge, that material will look uh, just cold and um, will be preserved in its natural state. But when it is put inside the freezer, it freezes up and then remain frozen until it is required and it is now defrozen. The fridge, you can keep vegetables in the fridge, you can keep fruits like uh, oranges, apple, you know, in the fridge. But for the freezer, you can put fish and meat in the freezer so that they can be frozen up and they can be preserved till for sure juices. Now, that's the end of stationary machines. We are through now with machines. I repeat it again. Machines are two types. The mobile or feed machine, stationary or process machine. Mobile machines are used on the field where crops are planted. Stationary machines are used in the farm building or farmstead. Then the mobile machines are three. Tractors, bulldozers, tree fillers, while stationary machines are dryers, shellers, fillers, mixers, motor making machines, and refrigerator. I hope this is well understood. Uh, some questions will pop up at the end of this study. Make sure you answer them. If you have difficulty in answering answer of the questions, you can refer uh, to the video back. Uh, now let's go to the implement. I mentioned another time that farm implements are the equipment that are just like farm tools. But the difference is that they are too heavy. We cannot use them with hands. So we rather attach them to the animals or plow and arrow and a tractor that will pull them. So farm implements are the equipment that can only be used when they are attached either to farm animal like a bull or to a tractor that will pull them. Examples of farm implements are plows, arrows, bridges, planters, spears, and harvesters. Now, uh, there are some implements that are designed to be used in temperate zones, while some are designed to be used in rainforest zones. For example, in Nigeria, there are implements that are designed majorly for use in the north. They are called mood board implements. But the players that are used in the south, they are called disc implements. So we are going to be considering disc plow, disc arrow, disc ridger. They are mood board plow, mood board arrow, and ridgers. Okay, let's start with the plow. The word plow means to clear the bush cover on the ground. That is to clear the bush cover on the ground. Then we have implement that can do that. They are called plow. Plow now is an implement that is used for clearing of bush. There are two types. We have the disc plow. We have the mood board plow. The disc plow is used in southern Nigeria. The, this plow can, it's very tough, very strong, and can undo stumps, can remove stones, can work on hard soils. But a mud board implement which is used in northern Nigeria. This mud board implement, they are not strong. They are very weak. They can easily break up. So you only use them where the soil is uh, not hard. And when you don't have stones and stumps that will absorb the works on the farm. And the only place for that is northern Nigeria. But this plow is used in the south. It can also, also work in the northern uh, Nigeria. That means this plow can work anywhere. But moonbuck plows are only limited to northern part of the country. Now, let's see the way they look like. For disc implement, it has a frame. This plow, this plow has a frame. Then, this frame has what you call a furrow wheel.
This is called spring. This is called furrow wheel. This is called beam, um, beam cap. Then this is the beam. Then you now have what we call them um, standards. The standards now are attached to concave disc. You have like three of them. Now, this is called scraper, this is called beam cap, concave disc, this is called standard. Now, this is a disc plow. The beam bears the weight of the implement and is used for deeper cut of the soil. The beam cap covers the hollow end of the beam. The spring is for shock absorber as the implement operates. The wheel, furrow wheel, is for mobility and balancing. Then, you have a coupling point. That's point of attachment to tractor. Coupling or linkage point. That's where it's attached to tractor. Then, you have the standard. The standard um, connects the concave disc and the scraper to the beam. Then you have the concave disc, which the implement use to operate. Concave disc is used for vertical cut of the soil, horizontal cut of the soil, and also for removal of the bush and to cover it. Then you have the scraper. The scraper is to remove any soil aggregate or clot that clings on the concave as it operates, or the clear on the concave disc. This is the disc plow. Then you have the mode board plow. The mode board plow motor plow is uh, different. It has also a standard with what we call the um, vertical disc. Yeah. Then you have another one here. Now, this is a this is a mobile plow. This is called the the beam. Or frame. Then it's called the coupling points. This is standard. This is vertical disc. This is mood board. This is shear points. Now this is a wood, this is a mood board uh, plow. The beam or the frame function like the beam or frame of this one. So the beam or the frame, it bears the weight of the implement, is also used for the deeper cut of the soil. The standard attaches the vertical disc and the um, mold board and shear point to the frame. Now the work of the concave disc here, I said three, I said for vertical cut, vertical cut of the soil, and also for the move of the stumps. Our bushes. The three walls are divided here. The vertical disc is a vertical cut of the soil. Vertical cut of the soil. Why shear point is horizontal cut of the soil. Why mood board will help to uproot the bush and bury the trash. But the advantage of mood board of disc over mood board plow is that this plow they are stronger. They can be used in the south. But these ones they are weaker. They cannot be used in southern Nigeria. 
Number two, this blouse, they bury the trash properly. But these ones, they don't bury the trash properly. And uh, mud board, um, this blouse again, the part cannot be broken easily. But this one, the mud board, the shape point can be broken easily. And that's all about plow. Now, this you should know. Plow is also called primary tillage implement. What I call it? Primary tillage implement. Why? Because it's the first type of implement you are going to use on the land. The first one you are going to use to clear the bush is primary tillage implement. Again, before I go, the first three, plow, arrows, and ridges, they are called tillage implements. Tillage. What's the meaning of tillage? Tillage means land preparation. Operation, or you call it pre planting operation. Note it that on the farm we have four major operations that we do on the farm. On the farm, we have four major operations on the farm. We have what to call the pre planting operation, pre planting operation, we have what to call planting operation, we have post planting operation, then we have harvesting operation or harvesting and storage now pre-planting operation that is what we also call tillage operation or we call it uh, um, um, tillage or pre-planting or land preparation operation and the first three implements are used for them plant operation it operation it is a planter that we use for it post planting operation it is the sprayer harvesting is the harvester now in tillage implement the first one we are going to use is plow that will call it that will call plow primary tillage implement the arrows they are secondary tillage implement why ridges are equally called secondary tillage implement we don't call it tertiary because sometimes you can skip arrow you can go from plow to ridge you can come from plow, arrow, and ridger. But so ridgers is still called secondary tillage implement. Now, let's look at arrow. How does an arrow look like? Arrow is used for loosening of soil clothes after you have used plow. Now, when, after we have used plow, as well as this plow to work on the farm, the soil will appear in form of crumbs, instead of big aggregates, which will not be smooth at all for crop production, for of crops. So what we're going to do is to break that soil clothes. What we need to use to break the soil clothes are called arrows. There are two types of arrows. We have to call this arrow and mood board arrow. Now this arrow operates by gang. It operates in gang. At least there must be a pair of gang in a disc arrow or two pairs of gangs. What is a gang? A gang refers to um, steel discs. Steel discs that are put on the same shaft. Let's say we have something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we have a shaft that enter it. These are steel discs. One, two, three, four, five, six. On a common shaft. On a common shaft. So, now, this is a gang. For you to have this caro, you must have at least a pair of gangs, meaning two gangs, or two pairs of gangs, meaning four gangs. So, let's have another gang now. One, two, three, four. Don't mind my diagram, six. So it goes, so it goes. Now, this, two gangs, a pair of gangs. The two that will be joined together. Now, this is disc meta disc or um steel discs still this this is still this this still this is very sharp at the edge and can cut this cut the soil in between the steel disc you have full wheel like a tire wheel for balancing then you attach the two together you attach together in front and then it has a coupling point Coupling point. That's the point you attach to the tractor. Coupling. The point attached to point. This place you attach to the tractor. The tractor put the implement on the farm. By its hydraulic system, it lowers the 
the arrow, the discs into the soil and move forward. The, the seed disc will lacerate the soil, splitting it and break all the soil close into particles. That's disc arrow. For moldboard arrow, which we also call, moldboard arrow is also called spring, spring, time cultivator. For this one, you have a rectangular frame. A rectangular frame, then you have some spikes or tooth attached to it that are bent forward. Then they are attached in front to a coupling point. The implements or the tractor will carry the implement to the farm. When I go to the farm, we lower it and these teeth, teeth will enter the soil and the implement will move forward and will tear the soil clothes into particles. The next to it is arrow. How am um, Ridgers. Ridgers are the implements that are used for making ridges on the farm. What are ridges? Ridges are elongated soil mold. When you have soil mold like this, that's elongated, it's called ridge. Then when you have it small like this, it's called hip. So the implements that make these ridges are called ridges. They are called ridges. They are called Regions. How does a region operate? A region has five discs, five discs, which are called concave discs, and they are on a rectangular frame. They are called rectangular frame. A disc will make half a ridge. So, in a tow journey, you have to have half ridges made by the five discs. On a front journey, you have to have half discs made, five and two and a half um, ridges made by the five discs. That means the tow and front journey. You have made five ridges. So how does a, a ridge looks like? A ridge has a rectangular frame. A ridge has a rectangular frame. Then it has coupling points attached to it. Then you have the standards, which is now attached to um, a concave disc with a scraper. Then you have another one here. You look at it very well. Don't forget, I said you have five. So you have another one here. Yeah. And last thing. Now, these are called a pair of opposing discs. This concave disc, concave disc, this scraper, this standard frame, coupling point or attachment point. Now this coupling point is attached to a tractor, so a tractor can pull it forward. Then. You have the standard attached to the concave discs. While the implement moves forward, this disc will throw in soil. This one will throw soil to this place. This one will throw soil here. 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 So in this journey, these two will make a ridge. Throw soil, throw soil, a ridge will be made. Another ridge will be made between these two. This one will make half a ridge. After it has gone to the end of the journey, it comes back. Why are you coming back? This one will make another ridge that will complete the ridge. This one will make a new ridge, a new ridge. At the end of the day, Nito and Joe Forney journey 
five disc uh, ridges are made. But in a tow, in one way journey, two and a half will be made because each of these will make half a ridge. This is a uh, sprayer, I mean ridger, disc ridger. Then from there, we can move to what we call the planters. The planters, they are the machines that are designed for planting of farm of seeds or greens on the farm. Planters are the, impl uh, are the implements that are used for planting of materials on the farm. We have the methods of planters. We have what we call broadcasting planter. Broadcasting planter. We have row planter. We have green drip planter. We have um, precision planter. These are the four types of planters we have. Now, before I go to the types of planter, you should know that when we plant on a big farm, we always plant with accurate in between and uh, in between, uh, between rows and on rows distances. So on the farm, this is where we plant. When we have a big farm like this, we plant on rows and we plant on columns. The rows, the distance between two cross on the same row is called within row. And the distance between two rows are called between rows. Now, when we use broadcasting planter, broadcasting planter spread the grains or the seeds on the farmland without any particular spacing in mind. It plants seeds with irregular spacings. That is it. Can be used to plant vegetables and grasses. Then we have row planters. Row planters put equal number of seeds into holes, dug at equal spaces along the row but not between rows. Grain drip planters put a number of grains on the, the holes to dog at equal spaces between rows and not, and not along the rows. But pressure planter put a number of seeds into holes, dog at equal spaces between rows and uh, along the rows. That's the pressure planter. Now, to see a pressure planter, pressure planter is much accurate because it plants very, very well. For you to see a pressure planter, um, you just, you have something like a hopper or um, soil tank. Then you have tires. Then you have other tires at the back. This upper This upper where the seeds are put. Then you have handle. You have under handle. Then you have a lash here. Then between here, you have a ruler. Then you have seed box. Now, this is called upper or seed box. This is called Ando. This is called Nest Romaka. Nest Romaka. This is called Rula. This is called Old Opener. This is called Old Closer. 
Let's go C2. Let's go full way. Now, in operation, the handle is pushed, but it can be connected to a tractor to the coupling point. This is the coupling point. So, while connected to the coupling point, the connector will pull the implement. Now, the planter, ha the uh, precision planter, has seed upper in between the two wheels at the either side of the implement. The seed upper with the seed box has a hole underneath that opens at interval of time to drop two or three seals. Then you have a device in front that as the implement move forward, it opens the hole. It opens the hole. When they sit together, it drops two seals or three. Then the hole closer always pushes soil to cover the hole. Meanwhile, the ruler will press that hole. And then this lashes we mark the next row that the crop will plant. This is called pre um, um, precision uh, planter. The next to planter is sprayer. A sprayer is a, an implement or an implement that is used for spraying chemicals on the farm to control the pests or weeds or to um, spray water on the farm in form of a light irrigation. Now, the different types of sprayer, we have to call the uh, watery can, which I spray under the farm tools. That's the tool. But for sprayer, we have to call the knapsack sprayer. What do I call it? Yes, knapsack sprayer. Knapsack sprayer is the first and the simpler form of a sprayer. For NASA sprayer, for knapsack sprayer, you have a tank. On the tank, you have A station pipe, switch, now this one has belt, The belt will be worn on the back, then it has a lid or cover. Then this is the tank where you put the chemical. This is the hose or flexible pipe. This is extension pipe. This is switch. Then this is now, to operate, you wear the NASA sprayer on back, your back. You will have filled the tank with the chemical and maintain under pressure. This is called hand pump. Hand pump. And this is hand belt. You wear, you wear the, the sprayer on the back via the arm belt. You put the content you want to use in the tank, cover with lead, and then jack the arm pump up and down to maintain pressure. And then you hold the extension pipe here, not the flexible pipe, the extension. This flexible pipe, which we also call hose. The hose of flexible pipe takes the content out of the tank to the extension pipe. You hold the extension pipe and put it to the wheat you want to spray and uh, switch on the switch and through the nozzle the chemical will gush out. That is the NASA sprayer. Last one is the harvester. Harvesters are machines designed for harvesting of crops from the farmland. For other types of harvesters, we have root cross harvesters, we have grazing harvesters, we have the best of which we call combined harvesters. Before you can harvest a plant, 
the plant must have been matured, must have ripe. When that is, has happened, then you can use the harvester. To use the harvester is an implement and is a, is, 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 is that different types of it that can be used on the farm. Welcome back to the agricultural science class. Uh, the new topic we want to study is farm mechanization. Farm mechanization. Now, what is farm mechanization? Farm mechanization involves the application of the various machines and implements that we have been studying on the farm to improve the productivity and the profitability of the farm business. I think it's again. Farm mechanization involves the introduction and the application of the various machines and implements on the farm in order to maximize the productivity and profitability of the farm business. Now, we are going to consider farm mechanization under the advantages, disadvantages, limitations, or problems of farm mechanization, as well as the prospect. Now, this you, sh you should understand this. When we talk about the advantages of farm mechanization, then we mean that if the machines are used on the farm, what are the benefits that the farmers stand to gain? for the use of the machines on the farm. And when we talk about the advantages, we talk about what are the advantages of the machines being used on the farm? What are the advantages that could be attributed to the machines on the farm? Then the limitations, talk about reasons why many farmers may not be able to use the machines. Reasons why many farmers may not be able to use the machines. Then they go for the problem, for the problem of farm mechanizations the reasons why farmers may not be able to use the machines. Then lastly, the prospects. Prospect of farm acquisition means what can we do to alleviate the problems of farm acquisition? What can we do that will encourage many farmers to adopt farm acquisition? So let's go to advantages of farm acquisition. When the machines are used on the farm, what are the advantages that the machines are used on the farm? The first one is timeliness of operations. In other words, the work on the farm will be completed within a very short period of time. It, it, it saves time. It does not allow time to be wasted because when human labor or animal labor is used, there will be need for rest, there will be need for waiting. But when machines are used, there is no need for resting or waiting. Quick, quick, the work is completed. Number two, it saves labor. Now, the labor, labor talks about human beings that work on the farm. When machines are used, then it saves labor. Labor will not need to be stressing and to be working effortlessly. Now two, it reduces health hazards. When machines are used on the farm, it reduces health hazards. When man work on the farm with cutlasses, cutlasses, hose, and shovel, he exposes himself to hazards such as the thorns, such as the bite of a, a dangerous animals, or even the tools hitting him and causing uh, injury on him. But when the, with the use of the machines, all these hazards are reduced or eliminated. Then it reduces or eliminates drudgery. Drudgery is, slack, is slackness in work. Sometimes farmers appear tired and bored, and so they are they, 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 they slow to work. They, do, they are not apt to it. But with the use of machines, drudgery is removed. Boredom is removed. Farm mechanization helps to eliminate or reduce um, drudgery in farm work. Then farm mechanization increases farm revenue. Certainly, when you use farm mechanization, you are increasing your output, and then you make more revenue, more profit for the farmer. It encourages landscape farming. Yes, the presence of machines will encourage the farmer to cultivate more land because there will be machines to do them. Then it increases output. Yes, because when the machines are available, you can produce more and your output will be higher. It promotes specialization of labor. Yes, when you have machines, farmer labor will not need to be do every work. Some work will be done by the machine and the laborers will now divide themselves, you know, into other operations. It uh, promotes specialization of labor. Then we observe that farm mechanization encourages cooperation among farmers. It encourages cooperation among farmers. For instance, some small-scale farmers can come together 
and hire tractor to work on their farms. Some farmers, South Korean farmers, will combine their farm together to become a mega farm so that they can take advantage of the use of farm machines. Then we observe that farm mechanization causes reduction in cost of operations. Yes, but then when you use the machines, you reduce cost of operations because the machines can handle bulk work within a short term limited period of time. Then all the allow it allows the deployment of labor for other sectors. You know, when you use machines on the farm, few laborers or labor will be required. The main labor cannot be deployed to other uh, sectors in the economy. Now let's look at the second point, disadvantages of farm mechanization. Disadvantages of farm mechanization. When you practice farm mechanization, what are the shortfalls or shortcomings that can be caused by the machines? The first one is high cost. High cost. Because you use farm mechanization, the machines are very expensive. And this high cost may not surface here. We would rather look at this high cost under limitation. So the first one is displacement of labor. Labor will be displaced. The meaning is that if 10 people are required to work on the farm, now when you have a tractor, maybe only two people required to operate the tractors, then eight other people will be unemployed. We observe that uh, over dependence on machines will lead to a lot of labor losing their jobs. So farm mechanizations causes displacement of labor. Number two, compassion of the soil. Some of these machines are very heavy, but that one would they move on the soil, the soil is compacted and pressed together, thereby uh, destroying a lot of things in the soil. Next, it causes environmental pollution. Yes, the smoke that comes from it causes from the big machines or, or bulldozers or tractors, these smokes, these heavy thick smokes will cause air pollution. The sand will cause noise pollution, while the oil that drips from the engine will, call, will cause water pollution or sewage. So um, farm mechanization can lead to environmental pollution. It causes degradation of landscape. By the time we begin to use the machine on the land, the landscape will be destroyed. The destruction of soil structure as well. It destroys the arrangement of the soil. So, so structure. The machines can call redundancy in farm labor. Yes, redundancy. It means that when the machines break them at any time, the farmers will be redundant. They cannot be able to work without the machines. Before the coming of the machines, farmers work with their tools. They are ready to work, they are apt to work. But by the time when the machine comes, they relax. Anytime the machine breaks down, it becomes so difficult for the farmers to pick their tools and work. So it causes redundancy of farm labor. Then, few crops can be mechanized. Few crops can be mechanized. This should be a form of problems or limitations to farm mechanization. But damage to crops, yes, um, we observe that the farm mechanization can lead to damage to crops. Sometimes these machines, which are expected to work on the farm, will destroy the crops by trapping on the crops accidentally or by breaking into the farm accidentally to destroy the crops. Now, wastage of excess produce or harvest if there are no sufficient storage or processing units. Yes, farm mechanization can lead to wastage of excess produce, especially if there are no readiness of uh, storage facilities or process facilities to handle the excess product. Okay, let's go to limitations, or let's start with the problems, problems of farm mechanization. There are quite a lot of problems. Now we have Latino system. Latino system is a system whereby the farmers depend on the customary system to acquire land for agriculture. Example is maybe through um, inheritance or through communal Latino system. Uh, this method will make a farmer to have very small land holdings, which will not be enough for agriculture. Two, Scatter farm holdings. Many farmers, they have their farms, small, small farms located in different places. And when this happens, the farmer, the farms, the farmlands are not together in a place. Farm mechanization will be impossible. Then you have inadequate facilities 
or before that, you have mixed cropping system. Many farmers practice mixed cropping systems. Mixed cropping systems is where by two or more times across are planted on the same piece of land at the same time. That kind of system of farming or cropping will not allow mechanization. For farm mechanization, we practice sole cropping. So any farmer who decides to go to mixed cropping certainly will not use machines. Because by the time when he uses the machine to operate one crop, the machine will destroy the other crops. Now, poverty of the farmers. Farmers are poor. Most of them are poor in rural communities. They do not have enough money to go into buying the required machines. Then, uh, inadequate facilities, inadequate low facilities for farmers, inadequate uh, even essential facilities to farmers to educate them on the machines uh, serve as a problem. Then bad topography. Sometimes the farmers that desire to use machines cannot do so because the topography will not support free movement of the farm machines. Then inadequate spare parts. A lot of machines have broken down that there are no spare parts because the machines are produced from outside the country and the spare parts are not available. And this has caused lots of discouragement to farmers from purchasing the farm machines. Then you have inadequate technical manpower. There are few people who know how to repair this machine or how to service them. When the machine breaks down, it will be difficult to revive them. So it serves as a problem. The problem of storms and logs on the farm, especially in the rural in the um, south, you have storms, you have logs of wood, which hinder free movement of these farm machines, and thereby frustrating the efforts. Now let's look at the limitations. The limitations are the problems, but we break them into four: economic limitation, technical limitation, lack of maintenance, and small land holdings. Economic limitations include one: the machines are very expensive. Economically, the farmers cannot purchase them. Two, the machines are not readily available in the country. They are produced outside the country, so they are not available in the country. Three, the high cost of maintenance and high cost of ironing machine, of ironing machines. It's expensive to maintain the machines. It's expensive to hire them to to work, and high charges or wages, high charges or wages, of the operators. The operators charges high wages which most farmers may not be able to come by. Technical limitations. Number one, the scarcity of experts to handle these machines, to repair them, to service them. Two, many of the machines are not adapted to local cli climates. The machines are produced from European countries, and they are not fully suitable in our own land. They are by making the machine to spread quickly. Then you have uh, many few schools are available to train operators. You know, we do not have so many operators around to operate the machines. Two, lack of maintenance. The more replacement parts are not available because they are not produced in the country. The machines are fabricated outside the country and the tools, replacement parts are not available. Two, inadequate personnel to repair the machines. There are no sufficient experienced technical people to repair the machine when they break down. The facilities to repair or maintain the machines are lacking. The facilities the methods, the equipment, the tools to use to repair the machines, they are lacking. Okay. Then, let's look at small land holdings. The small land holdings can also be a limitation to farm mechanization. Why? Because many farmers, they operate through natural system, which does not encourage the use of farm mechanization. Then, land fragmentation, the breaking system by which land is broken into fragments, into fractions due to land system by inheritance and communal land trust system. This will not encourage this land fragmentation, will not encourage mechanization. And lastly, peasant farmers have small land holdings. I mentioned that before. They have small land holdings which are scattered at different locations. And there's no way that they will be brought together, thereby frustrating um, farm mechanization. Now, prospects of farm mechanization mean that how can we overcome these limitations? How can we solve the problems? Number one, farmers should be educated to accept modern farming change, changes in farming. Farmers should be educated to accept modern changes in farming, especially in mechanization. Two, government should grant loans for farmers to obtain the farm machines. 
Three, the land use decree less seventy should be enforced so that farmers can obtain more land for agriculture. Simple and less expensive machines should be developed in the country. More people should come together to fabricate these machines that will be cheaper and weather friendly. Next, farmers should form cooperatives to enable them farm machines, find, buy farm machines. If the machines are expensive for a single farmer to purchase, two or more of them could come together, put their resources together in form a cooperative and buy the farm machine for form common use. Then individual corporate organizations could buy these machines and rent them out for farmers. Banks should give loans to farmers at low interest rates to make them buy machines and use. use. Government should establish agricultural engineering department in schools to train personnel on how to fabricate and on how to use the machines. Now, we've come to the end of farm mechanization, so a question will pop up on you. Try to answer the questions. If you find such questions difficult, don't hesitate to go back into your uh, video and watch again. Thank you.